Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we're getting stuck into the Audi. Hey guys, welcome back, and many of you may have seen the last episode where I introduced this car, the Audi A6, to you, and some of you may have picked up, it was very difficult keeping a straight face saying that this was a uh, modern classic and an iconic period of Audi's um, history. It really isn't. Uh, I don't think this car is going to go up in value. No, uh, a lot of you might not have watched the, uh, the very end of that video where I actually led a little hint that... Uh, this engine is actually going into the Rockster. It's going to be uh, the new heart for my Rockster race car. This car has a 4.2 litre V8. It is the uh, earlier versions of these Audi engines. These, uh, the, the later versions like I had in my previous Audi S5 has a timing chain. This has a timing belt, which is much easier to service and maintain. And um, there, a lot of you may be questioning why I chose to go this way, and that will become more apparent, apparent lately. But uh, Yes, this car is uh, getting parted out. It was uh, it was very cheap. The engine has 230,000 Ks on the clock, so it's not the freshest of things, but uh, I think it will serve my purposes uh, purposes nicely. And basically, I could get just an engine, probably cheaper, but getting the whole thing is going to be easier for the conversion first time. But if this engine dies, the replacements are relatively cheap. Um, so that is why I am going this way and... Uh, it's actually much cheaper than an LS. Um, that's a lot of people are asking why I didn't go on LS. There are many reasons for that, but uh, that is one of them. This is, this is actually quite a cheap power plant that in standard form delivers about the same power as the equivalent LS engine. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good start. So let's start uh, tearing into it. We need to get this engine out and that's the mission for today. So uh, Let's start getting this car into the uh, Audi service position, which basically removes moving the front end. I think they'll make things much easier. And, uh, and then start disassembling, getting fluids out and all the rest of it. Let's, uh, let's do it. Okay, so um, I just uh, that took me about half an hour then, and I've just put the front end into the Audi service position. So basically, um, it's designed. It would have been good to know this when I was working on my Audi S5, but uh, most of these Audis seem to have a service position where you basically remove the whole um, uh, radiator support, disconnects from the car, and moves forward out of the way, so you've got plenty of room to work. Um, yeah, basically just sort of disconnecting the bumper cover, that comes off quite easily, and then just a few more bolts and the, uh, the whole front end is loose. Um, gonna give me a bit more room to work, so uh, let's, uh, next thing I think is to drain the fluids and then we can start just taking everything off. I haven't got a manual or anything, I'm just pulling things away until I can get that bit out. Well, that is a good sign because at least the uh, oil and the coolant both look nice and clean. So uh, uh, it looks like this engine was in uh, pretty decent health. It definitely wasn't abused like <laughs> Rockster was. So um, let's keep going. I think now I might actually um, I might actually cut off those exhaust pipes. So I cut that exhaust off, that's good. Now I'm gonna start uh, disassembling stuff at the top. I did consider removing this entire front end, but the air conditioning system is all still connected up and uh, I don't particularly just wanna let the gas go. I, I can basically just hopefully disconnect the, uh, the air conditioning compressor, leave it in the car and, uh, and sort of leave it all connected there and just take the engine out and uh, not have to deal with air conditioning stuff. You shouldn't really vent it out to the uh, atmosphere if you can avoid it. So uh, let's try not to do that. So uh, let's start pulling some of these covers off and just see what I have to disconnect to get this thing out. Thank you. 
Most of the wiring loom around the engine looks like it's just unplugged so that uh, basically the engine can be removed without going crazy on all the wiring. So I've got a lot of it disconnected already. Um, I can't immediately see the tension on the belt, so I'm just gonna cut the belt because I don't need all of that stuff anyway. Obviously, it's a race car, I don't need aircon. I'm gonna disconnect the aircon compressor and the power steering pump down there, but first, I'm going to uh, open up the uh, ECU, which I believe is under here, and um, basically I'm gonna try and put all this loom onto the engine and keep the loom together with the engine uh, and the ECU as it comes out, and that should uh, save me a bit of trouble later. I was at first hoping I could just undo the bell housing bolts with the engine in the engine bay and, and leave the transmission in the car, but it looks like it's just gonna be extremely difficult to do that. Um, I'm not sure if I can reach everything. So um, I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna remove the exhaust and then disconnect the tail shaft. And hopefully I can just keep, take the whole engine out with the transmission com com combined and then uh, take the transmission off once it's out of the car. Okay, so I've got my tail shaft disconnected and I've also got my front drive shafts disconnected. Now I just need to come under here. There's the alternator here and then up a bit higher up there, there's a, uh, an earth strap that's uh, strapped to the car. So I need to undo them. And then I think I can undo uh, the gearbox mounts. So once I've undone the gearbox mounts from underneath, um, I can lower the car down, undo the engine mounts from the top also, I need to get inside and undo the, uh, the, the shifter from inside so that I disconnect the, uh, um, the transmission from there. And then hopefully I can start lifting the engine out. Fingers crossed it's that easy. It's not gonna be that easy. Um, I went inside the car and had a quick go at disconnecting the, um, um, the, the gear selector and uh, I couldn't get it undone quickly and easily so I just jumped underneath and cut the, the line to it, cut the cable. Let's face it, nobody's ever going to put this thing back together again so um, now it's time to strap the engine up and start uh, disconnecting some of these engine mounts and see if I can lift this engine up and out. It's close, it's really close. <laughs> it's caught on the CV, on the front drive shaft on this side, um, on the end of the, the sort of the, the, the CV knuckle, it's, it's sort of getting caught up in there. I may find it easier, I might just try and disassemble this wheel and take the CV out, that may be the easiest way to get it, get it out. Um, but I think, I'm gonna call it quits for today because I think I'm tired and I'm gonna make, I'm gonna hurt myself, I think it's just, Take my time and uh, we'll uh, get back to it tomorrow morning. All right, it's a new day, I'm fresh. And um, as we left it, basically the engine is held up on the front drive shaft on this side. So I'm going to get down now, pull the drive shaft out, and then hopefully it will uh, free up the engine so I can get the whole thing out and we'll <laughs> have it done. Fingers crossed it's that easy. Okay, well that didn't work, 
Basically, I was trying to undo the nut that's on the end of the drive shaft here. Um, all I've got that actually fits the fitting I've got for that is actually um, only a 3 8 drive. And uh, yeah, I just snapped the adapter through, so that's not going to work. And then I had an epiphany. I'm not keeping the drive shafts or anything on this car. I don't need to look after them. I can just cut the drive shaft in half and uh, then we should be able to get the engine out, I think. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut it. Okay, that was a lot of fun and games and I still can't get it out. Basically, I, um, I sort of got it so far forward and, uh, and I thought, oh, look, I might be able to undo the bell housing while it's in there and disconnect the, uh, the, the transmission. Now it's sort of moving in the, the space. There's more room to get around. But uh, there was one cap head bolt that, uh, that I have stripped and I need to cut it off and there's no easy way to cut it off while the thing's in the car. So I need to do what I probably should have done ages ago that probably would have been much easier is uh, I need to drop the subframe of the car. So basically three bolts either side at the front here. Um, there's a couple bolts at the back, but I might try and just, uh, just lower the front. I don't need that much space. I just need some clearance. So if I don't have to take it off completely, then I can put it back on again without too much effort and uh, still have a rolling chassis. So uh, let's uh, lower it down, see if we can undo the subframe and then hopefully this engine will come out. Oh, it's out. Finally, it is out. <laughs> that was way more work than it should have done. And now I can see why they generally just remove the whole subframe to get the uh, engine out. If you're gonna do that to your own Audi, uh, yeah, just take the whole subframe out, the whole thing, yeah. Anyway, it's out, yay. Okay, well, it's out and the subframe's back on the car and the front end sort of bolted on and stuff that again, just so it's uh, uh, easy enough to move around. Um, now, the next thing to do is um, I just want to um, strip off the gearbox off of this. So um, a little bit of work, because obviously this massive lump is not going back in the car. So let's get rid of it. All right, so the next job is to remove this horrible thing off of the engine, and I have never played with autos before, so I've never had to mess around with these horrible things, but I understand I should be able to access and unbolt the torque converter from the back somehow. Now, normally there's a cover plate, but obviously on this car, I'm hoping it's behind the starter motor. So let's get that off and see, and hopefully there's a way to actually get in and undo bolts from the, uh, the starter motor access. Okay, so I finally got that horrible torque converter taken off of the engine. The flex plate's off and there's also, there's a little ad adapter ring um, that I've taken off. So this is all back down to the bare base. Now, a lot of you are probably still questioning why I chose to go with this particular engine. And there is a method to my madness. And that is something I will demonstrate to you right now. So what I have here, this is actually uh, the the transaxle I took out of the Rockster. So this is the Rockster's original uh, Porsche transaxle. Watch carefully. Ta-da! 
<laughs> so basically what has happened here is um, well, the Rockster's transmission bolts directly onto the Audi V8. And why is this, you ask? Because basically the, um, the, the Rockster transaxle, the Boxster transaxle, is actually is, is pretty much an Audi front wheel drive gearbox that's uh, been put into the back of the Boxster. And this, as you can see, bolts directly up to the Audi V8, which is why I chose the Audi V8. <laughs> um, there's no adapter needed. I do need to uh, have a look at what I need to do about a, a clutch and flywheel, but that has all been done before. Uh, I am not the first to do this. There are plenty of people who have done this, and that's why it is such a, uh, a great conversion. Uh, many of you are wondering whether this engine would fit. Yes, it fits. Um, it sits centrally in the car. I will have to get the, um, the scales on and actually weigh both engines, this and the old Rockster engine, to actually let you know what the difference in weight is. But um, this is the main reason why I chose this, um, uh, this engine for the car. Now, I know that these gearboxes um, have handled way more power than what this thing currently makes. Um, I may look at uh, getting a lot more power out of it in the, in the future. And from what I gather, basically all of the 986 Boxster um, five speed, so out of the smaller engine cars, the base model cars, all bolt directly up. I believe the six speeds in the 986s, the 986 Boxster S, those uh, transaxles need uh, a small amount of modification to get them to fit. They don't bolt directly up. I think there might be an ear or something that doesn't line up properly. I haven't looked into it a lot, but uh, from what I gather, that's roughly the case. And I believe both the base 987 Boxster and Cayman and also the Boxer and Cayman S gearboxes bolt up as well. And uh, obviously the S gearbox the, uh, is, is a much bigger, sturdier box that is uh, something that I can look into in the future if I want more power and this thing doesn't handle it. But from what I gather, these things handle a reasonable amount. So um, that is why I've chosen to go this way. It's, um, it is a relatively tidy package. It's, a, uh, it's a quite a cheap engine. Uh, standard, this thing is about a 300 horsepower engine, so uh, it's quite a big jump from where I was with the uh, uh, with the Rockster, which was about a 200 horsepower engine. So it's uh, it's it's about 50% more power out of the box straight away. So um, it's going to take a bit to get it fitted, but hopefully you guys follow along with me and uh, and enjoy join me on this journey. And if you want to help out on this build and my other crazy builds, uh, make sure you come over and join us on Patreon. Uh, you get to watch the, watch the videos a day early, ad free, and um, yeah, it really uh, helps the channel out. And if you need to get any parts for your Porsches, make sure you compare prices at PorschePartsByJeff.com first. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one.